What is up, brothers and sisters? It's Jay Campbell, and you're listening to the Jay Campbell Podcast. Join me for regular deep dives with amazing beings whose work is manifesting a golden age. And remember, you create your reality by your focused thoughts, conscious words, and intentional actions. Raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. Hey guys, what's up? It's Jay Campbell, and I'm making a quick commercial here for SeerCustom.com, my revolutionary cosmeceutical peptides company, co-founded with my business partner, Nick Andrews, who happens to be one of the world's top formulators. We have the revolutionary Oxano Grow, which completely regrew my hair. If you guys saw my hair about a year ago, I was almost bald. I even had the micropigmentation program from uh, Advantis. And now I've completely regrown my hair. That's just with version one. Version two is now in the marketplace or will be very, very soon. And it is three to five times as more effective than the current version or the original beta version of Oxana. We also have Royal Blue Serum and Sky Blue Cream, which will completely upgrade your face. I mean, I'm almost 50 years old. I have a pretty good complexion. I use it regularly. My wife swears by it. It will reduce fine lines and wrinkles, dramatically improve elasticity, and just the overall look and feel of your face. You feel great on both of them. You can also use them with red light therapy. There's all sorts of great stuff. So go to a seercustom.com. And if you're a first time customer, use the coupon J15 to take 15% off your purchase. I appreciate all you guys. And I send you tremendous love and light. Well, hello everybody out there, wherever you might be. This is Jay Campbell and you are watching the Jay Campbell podcast. Grateful. And in the spirit of gratitude, I am joined by my longtime friend now, Dr. Rudy Everwine of the Medical Institute or Medical Health Institute of Miami. Rudy, what's up, brother? How are you, man? What's going on, Jay? It's been a long time coming, man. I've been waiting and, and, and looking forward to this, man. You know, we vibe, our energy collide. It's just a beautiful thing. So I can't wait to, to get this going. Yeah, so this is going to be an epic one. So uh, Rudy and I actually met back, I think, in 2017 at the conference. Was it in uh, Miami, right? It was the yeah, AMMG. The AMMG, yep. yeah. Yep, AMMG. And, you know, he works for two of my really, really good friends, or not for, but with, at the Medical Health Institute. He's an amazing doctor. He's actually writing a book on hormone optimization and a bunch of other things. He's a very high conscious brother. I've spent time actually with him and his wife at his beautiful home in Miami. So I'm very, very blessed to have him here today. Um, today is actually, from a date standpoint, the last day of September 2021. And we are in the middle of four days into Mercury retrograde. And the world is essentially going haywire in like... A million different ways. Like I have so many things I could talk about that's happened in the last two days. I'm sure you have too. But uh, obviously the conversation here today is about hormonal health. Before I get into these amazing talking points, and we have obviously a lot of them, like Rudy, how much has COVID and just the whole like lethargy and the malaise of people who are, you know, forced to be locked down or stuck in their homes from last year. And now obviously heading into this year, like how much has that made the lack of health and the suboptimal hormone situation of society worse? Man, it, it, it's a, it's crazy. It's an avalanche of, of sickness that we're seeing now. It, it, it's scary, but, but Jay, you know me, I'm an eternal optimist. Yes. You have yes. to go through difficult moments to be able to rise and shine. So exactly. I feel like this is going to be a difficult moment, but we'll come out of this stronger, wiser. There is a complete awakening to yes. energy, to awareness that me and you are part of this now. Yeah, no, I'm 100% with you. And I'm, I'm grateful that you said that. And it is, it's an energy right now. The planet is, the, the planet is, in, is in, uh, undergoing a birth. It's a birthing process to move into what is coming which I like to call the golden age, the new earth, whatever it is. And, you know, this is a collective gigantic dark night of the soul for a lot, a lot of people. You know, they have to be experience this radical shift, this radical change in order to take personal responsibility for their health, among obviously many other things. But I, you and I both know that 
all of this starts with our physical health because I mean, if you don't have physical health, you don't have joy. You don't have ability, the ability to maintain, you know, a state of happiness beyond, you know, the ups and downs and the ebbs and flows of survival. And it's like, this is the greatest gift that you, you know, work, working with patients, me out here on my soapbox, you know, telling people that like, once you optimize your health and again, you take proactive control of your health so that, you know, you and you alone are the one that's responsible for it. Everything shifts. Now to segue that, obviously you and I are big into teaching people and speaking about how to optimize their hormones. Now, Again, we are now in a world where, as you know, better than anybody, everything is against us, right? Like I'm drinking the best purest water in the world with the lowest deuterium other than deuterium depleted water. It still comes in a plastic bottle. In a plastic bottle, EDCs, baby, EDCs. <laughs> the blue light, the white light, the technology. I mean, I say this all the time, right? Like even our phones are covered well, in military grade spec plastic which leaches through the skin, the cuticle, and causes all sorts of disruption to biological systems. So knowing that we're under siege from our environment, from modernization, what do you, what do we do? What do we tell people? I mean, we're going to get into the heart of this and get deeper, but like, what do you say to the average person who comes in now to your clinic and sits down with you and has this conversation about like, doc, you know, I feel like shit. I'm 25, I'm 35, I'm 55, no. you know, what do I do? Well, so, so let me start with a little bit telling my story about where I've been, about how I got here. So I'm traditional trained, internal medicine. I, I did my internal medicine and, and, and training at Jackson Hospital, University of Miami, completely conventional. As you know, did not learn anything about testosterone or hormone replacement. I was lucky enough that my undergrad major was on nutrition. So at least I knew something, which I never <laughs> learned in medicine. Which so, is a lot more than most docs, bro. Not, so I didn't even know why I did it. I, I guess it, it, it prepared me. The universe prepared me. The synchronicity me. of the universe, exactly. So I went to work into a major hospital in the Miami area, hospitalist. It was rewarding, but... There's only so many people you can treat when, when right. they're at that stage. Right. So I was lucky enough to be able to step back from this and went into the preventive medicine. And that's when my background in nutrition sciences awesome. helped me. So me and my wife, uh, we opened a weight loss clinic called The New You in Miami and started dealing with this. So we helped a lot of people, but I would get them to a certain point, but we couldn't go further. Right. That's when I got into the world of hormones, become board certified in home in age management medicine. I add the hormone component to it. So with this, I was able to get a lot of my patients better until I added the mindset to it and get all of those things together is now I can say I have a holistic program for those patients who come to me and are lost. They go to their primary care doc and they're like, doc, I don't feel good. Reflex is to give an SSRI, to give them Paxil. So I was able to step down and really put all of those, this knowledge of outside of my traditional medicine background and be able to make me a much better physician and healer. So again, to answer your question, when those patients come to us, man, you know that those are distressing calls we get oh, yeah. sometimes from those guys. Oh, yeah. It's like, doc, I don't feel great. I have no motivation, no energy. It's like I have everything to be happy, but I just can't get there. I went to the prime to, to my primary. They told me everything is fine. I look at, at it, we look at it with our eyes differently. And we're like, no, your numbers are not where they are supposed to be. Right. But what I've realized, and I think this is where um, doctors, we always want to know, there has to be a cause for your symptoms. Right. So uh, traditional medicine recognizes um, long, um, late onset hypogonadism. So right. they only think that only old guys can get low T. <laughs> and if we think about our, gener our parents, grandparents' generation, that's kind of true. That's, those were the guys that were getting low T. In their 60s and 70s, it's kind of expected. Testosterone goes down as we right. age. Right. So I didn't know the big why. Why are we seeing so many younger guys? Why are we seeing healthy guys with low T and all the symptoms of low T? 
yes, diet plays a role, processed foods play, play a role, poor sleep, the, the, the telephone. But until I found out about the EDCs, the endocrine right. disrupting chemicals, right. and what they do, the havoc that they wreak on our endocrine system, that's when I put it together. We are living right now into a crazy experiment where they are putting 80 million pounds of atrazine Insane. in the US, 60 million pounds of BPA and phthalates, Insane. and they're just putting it out there. We don't know what's going to happen. And we're surprised when we see a high rate of infertility, high rate of erectile dysfunction, right. high rate of low T, high rate of depression, obesity, cancer. So EDCs have been linked to all of those things. Everything. Everything. So now I can tell to my patient, yes, I understand you. I empathize with you. I can't tell you exactly which EDC you were exposed to, but there is something bigger than you that's causing a lot of your symptoms. But no fear. We can help. Beautiful, my brother. Exactly. Um, I mean, well, I want to go back because I want to blow this up because, I mean, again, you're the guy that I can speak about this with. This is an epidemic. Okay. I have a friend who is a big time copywriter in the European Eurozone. And, you know, he read my book, the, the newest one, and he just sent me a cold email and he's like, look, dude, he's like, I have this issue. I'm 35. I read your book. I was blown away with the knowledge that you're putting out there. He's like, nobody knows about this, but I can help you because I can write very engaging, persuasive copy that will be able to be read by younger men, you know, throughout the Eurozone and really the world and talking about this. And so again, there's no coincidences, only uh, synchronicities in the universe. He sent me his first draft this morning, you know, early cause he's in over there and you know, the time difference and stuff from the, the West coast. And I was reading it as I woke up and I was like, this is profound stuff. But I mean, dude, like, you know, when you start using those statistics about millions of pounds of fertilizer, and as you said, you know, EDCs, I mean, Dude, this is so bad that the Hebrew University study, you know, forecasted that men XY chromosome would be extinct at some point between 2040 and 2050. And yes, you can fact check me, guys. I just said that males would not be able to procreate. We would not be able to literally continue as a species. Now, obviously the transhumanists will say, Oh, that's not true. They'll create a robot and merge it with man. And you know, they'll be, you know, CRISPR technology. I mean, dude, this is a crisis and it is a crisis that very few people are aware of. And again, as you said, look around in society, we have emasculated men and masculinized women. Yeah. The inverse is also true for women who are also walking around hormonally suboptimal because of all the estrogen. It works, you know, in the inverse. So it's like yeah. we have this horrific situation, dude, where most men are not even aware. You know, they go to, like you said, they go to a primary if they even go and they're like, doc, I feel like shit. And the doc writes them a script for an SSRI and an ED med. Yeah. And then, they're, you know, the root cause is never addressed. I mean, as you know, the root cause, they don't even know what the root cause is because they're not trained to even seek it out. It takes somebody like you, you know, who's age management certified, who's gone off the beaten path to figure this stuff out. But I mean, you guys are still, you know, one out of 100 docs, probably one out of 500 docs. That, that's so amazing, man. Uh, with the privilege to know comes the duty to act. Right. We know better now, Jay. We know. Thank God. And I have to tell you, I'm still a conventional doctor. I still do my internal medicine. I'm the medical director of a big nursing home. I work with a, with a local um, Indian um, Native American clinic. I still do primary care. I still awesome. love, I still follow the tenets of my internal medicine training. But we need to expand our knowledge. This is a new world that we're, that, that we're really? living in. Um, I have to tell you, uh, I'm proud of the University of Miami. Uh, Dr. Ramasamy, you know him. Of course, I, I know him very well. He done he's the a first podcast. urologist, the first board certified urologist who came out with a paper to say that um, adolescents and young adult men are having low T. Yep. So this is not anymore. But I asked him, I'm like, how come the AUA um, is not talking louder about this? How come we're not paying attention 
to what's happening. So, Jay, if we're seeing this, imagine the next generation. Oh, it's insane. The generation after. Because it's as insane. we know, again, as we know, but not, not everybody may know that, and I've learned about this over the past three years. I've been on the testosterone world for 12 years. I just right. learned this. EDCs are transgenerational. Yes, they affect exactly. epigenetic changes and they affect the fetus in the womb with an increased risk of undescended testes, testicular cancer, hypospadia, infertility, low T, prostate cancer, and on and on and on. So now you got a fetus that was exposed to this. The poor kid gets born. He doesn't know what happened to him. Now he's 20 years old. He has ED. He's infertile. He's fat. He's tired. He has a big belly. He's like, and he's trying. We have guys, they try. They're trying to eat well. They're exercising. They take the supplements and they're like, doc, nothing's working. Right. Dude. So imagine the, each generation is going to get worse and worse. How do we not sound the alarm on this? Well, d d I mean, there's just, there's a lot to unpack what you just said. I mean, I I'm looking for what, the guy sent me today to, to just echo what you were saying, because thank God, you know, Dr. Ramase, and now there's actually even urologists. I'm looking for the data that was sent to me this morning. I'm scrolling through it right now, but I can't find it, but it doesn't matter. The, the reality is, is that there are people out there that are becoming awake to this. Yes. They are telling us that this is not an old man issue anymore. This is a serious issue for young healthy, as you said, otherwise healthy, normal males mm -hmm. who are, you know, again, whatever, I mean, it's, again, it's, you know, as you know, Dr. Nichols, you know, comes, came up with, uh, what is it? Uh, testosterone, three, right. Three hypoendrogenism. Three hypoendrogenism, right. So that, that's, you know, I mean, you know, whether or not the, the world is willing to admit that, but that's, that's where we are. So to, to take that as our basis right now, you've got 20 year old guys Dr. Rob was talking to me about this today. He, he literally mentioned this to me today. He said, dude, you know, in our passing conversation, he goes, dude, I had an 18 year old kid come in the other day with a 76. Yeah. What the 76 hell? total what testosterone. Yeah. So this is, so this is where we are. And you just identified it. This is type three hypogonadism. It's caused by a downstream, you know, causational or cause causal link between endocrine disrupting chemicals, disabling, the androgen receptors and also mm -hmm. connecting to the androgen receptors. So the inverse is true. And then, as you said, there's trans linking, which isn't even being studied. So, you know, again, we're creating a race of people that are hormonally defective. Now I will go back to what Dr. J, you know, Dr. Anthony J says in his book, Estrogen generation, he said, amazing look, book. amazing book. He said, literally, look, he said, and this was as of night of 2018. He said, if we put male fish into any stream, freshwater tributary, lake, salt, freshwater in the United States, within 12 months, they become female. Yep. So, dude, as you know, and again, this is not condemnation. This is a point of reference. Look around. Yep. Go out to a mall. Go out to a park. Go out to a place where you have large population swaths. And look at the dudes from behind and you can't tell them apart, bro. They have so yeah. much estrogenic body fat. They have man boobs. They have, you know, yeah. again, their bodies are starting to effeminize. And I mean, it's insane where we're at. But again, without this kind of podcast and us talking about this, and again, not enough people are talking about it. There are some, thank God. But this is where we're at, bro. I mean, let's just be honest. I mean, you know, anybody who denies this at this point is a conspiracy theory conspiracy theory is clueless yeah uh again you know it's funny my book is going to be called low t generation awesome. no longer an old man disease it, it's plain and simple and my goal into doing this is to really legitimize low t as a true clinical syndrome and i tell you man um i want to i i, I love my doctor friends man my conventional traditional friends I have great relationship with them. What I want, I want to talk to them and be like, guys, look at the data. Listen to your patients. When they come to you and you do a basic blood test, right. cholesterol, A1C, CBC, SMA7, and everything's normal, don't just tell them it's in your head. 
go deeper. Something is happening. So right. I feel like the more we have people talking about this, eventually it should not be just me and you talking about this. This should be the big universities doing research and treating patients. And eventually that should be mainstream. It still not is. Well, you're going to laugh, but this just popped in my head. And I already know that this is going to come about. You and Dr. Rob are actually going to create a training institute. I, I, I mean, I'm telling you, I when I get these feelings, dude, it's happening right now. I get the hair stands up on the here and right here. And they're all like, like... I'm positive that this is what you guys are going to end up doing. This is one of your guys' callings. You guys are going to somehow work together to teach emergency med docs, primary care physicians, you know, even urologists and endos. Let's just be honest. Yeah. Yeah. How to actually optimize not just men, because this goes into the female side the of things too. Big time. I mean, but this is where you're going with this because like your book will be the door opener of like, guys, this is a serious clinical issue. This is not some guys who are having a midlife crisis, driving a red Corvette who want to have more sex. Okay. And as you know, the media has pinpointed a lot of this, you know, Rick Collins, friend of all of ours, just sent me a link today on Facebook that, you know, they're, they're, they're going after testosterone again. Because of some bullshit study that was published two, two or three days ago, again, in comorbid men, you know, mm -hmm. who had heart pre pre-existing heart issues that, you know, they're, they're uh, writing less scripts for therapeutic testosterone because of blah, blah, you know, again, it's always BS, yeah. but they're still attempting, as you know, yeah. to restrict the prescribing of testosterone. That's why they keep narrowing the ranges and dropping the ranges down and saying, oh, it's due to the epidemiological outcome mm -hmm. of obesity. Yeah. Have you seen the latest LabCorp report? The upper limit of testosterone has become 816. Dude, that's insane. I tell guys, look, you're not only going to feel better, you're going to have better sex. Those things are kind of what everybody knows. Right. But your mind, you're exactly. going to be more your for, for mental health, Cognition. emotional health, spiritual health. That's what helps. Testosterone, the studies are really strong that it's showing that it increases uh, serotonin. Good. It actually acts on one of the serotonin receptors. Right. So it helps with mood. Testosterone works with dopamine. So it increases the reward center. So a lot of guys had an amazing patient today, 32 years old, have everything going for him. Testosterone level 385. Primary told him nothing's wrong. Right. The you're fine. Was, Go home. You're fine. <laughs> the guy's like, man, you don't understand my life. I'm not the same guy. Even my kids don't bring me as much pleasure right. as what it used to be. Right. You know, like we went over everything. We, I, I always do a risk benefits assessment. I talk about fertility um, ramifications. We do the whole talk. Two months later, he calls me. He's like, doc. It's like, and I love this the way he said it. It's like there was a dimmer and you put the dimmer on high. Exactly. Everything is brighter. The yeah. highs feel higher. The lows don't feel as low. So one thing I feel that we, it's not being talked in, uh, in, uh, um, about enough, it's the mental benefits of testosterone. Yes. Forget yes. the physical and the sexual. The mental benefits. I had another guy who, who wrote me something. It's like, Doc, I made a million dollars last year because of testosterone. He's a real yeah. realtor. Real estate is doing really well. But this is what gives you ambition, drive, right. being the right. alpha, the leader. But remember, we talked about this. To me, being the alpha, but with compassion, with understanding. Yeah. Compassion. So it's not the alpha with the aggression. But if you need the aggression, sometimes it's there. But you are now able to kind of really take a step back with that inner confidence, that that inner peace, knowing that you got this, this is what testosterone does, man. There's and no doubt, dude. I, there's I'm no a doubt. complete, um, you know, I, I'm I'm a product of, of my therapy. I started thinking about writing a book and doing all this once I optimized. Once I got optimized on, on hormones. Exactly. Well, I mean, so the so I have a study. It's crazy, dude. That book is now almost four years old, right? And, and, and there's a lot of it that has already been improved on and, and, and great. And I wrote, you know, you don't even probably know this yet because you've been working today. You're still in your uniform. But I published an article today on gynecomastia that's the best 
article ever. You know, my copywriter took a week. We researched it. We interviewed the world's top gyno removal surgeons. It's insane. Mm -hmm. It's 10,000 words. Wow. It was published today. And it's like looking at the TOT Bible, which is still the definitive guide. And then looking at that today's article and the, the Bible was off by 60%. You know, Dr. J, you know, figured out in 2018 that gyno was genetic and 64% code for it. So, I mean, the, the truth is, and you know this, but the truth is, is that for us in at the cutting edge, at the at the you know the top tip of the spear, we have to be, as you said, compassionate, and we have to have this ability to adapt yes. and pivot. Yes, we cannot hold on to what th things that we once thought were true. And I mean, I could go on and on and on, but i I want you, I want, I want to talk about what you were just saying about cognition because I remember linking to a study you know, in the original book, the first book, the TRT manual it was a Harvard study. And it was about, they had all these guys that were in the, uh, their wall street dudes. And as you said, you know, a lot of people have this like preconceived, you know, propagandized mindset that testosterone makes people alpha, excuse me, uh, alpha cocky assholes, arrogant, mm -hmm. conceited, blah, blah, blah. And the truth is this study did this, like it was a landmark study. Again, I think it was from 2011. And again, it got no play, but they concluded that optimized levels of testosterone made a man strategical, tactical, and balanced, which is if you think of those three things, that is a compassionate human being because this is a man now who's like literally at the top of his game, but he's not taking advantage of people. And that's what they've promoted in the media, as you know, and it's just BS brother it's total bs so this is where my theta male theory is alpha so those are archetypes alpha beta male nobody's just alpha or beta but there's definitely guys who have more alphas there's guys who have more beta right. Right. but i don't want you to become that aggressive no. um I call them. So the guys, a lot of my guys who, when they go on testosterone treatment and they're worried that they're going to become um, uh, too aggressive. And we've, I've had call from some wives that call me to be like, Hey, my husband's a little too aggressive or, or he's, he's becoming an asshole. What I tell them, I'm like, testosterone just makes you more, a better person or a better version of what you were. Exactly. You were an asshole before testosterone. You know what? You become you're a, gonna be a much bigger you become asshole. A confident asshole. Right. You know, That's exactly. so, but there's absolutely no question that you can coach somebody into getting that compassion, getting that gratitude feeling, getting that energy that you can really help. Because now that you have that inner confidence, you don't need to have that outward showing of violence, of aggression, because you know you got this. To me, this is what a good alpha is, is that you're a leader, but you can be a leader that lets other people lead. You can lead from the back. You don't need to be always the one showing up. Whereas the guys with low testosterone, what do they do? How do they compensate for their shortcomings? By being violent, by being the loudest, by being by you know by buying the, the, the ridiculously expensive cars. This is how you compensate. Once you feel you optimize, and again, remember my four bubbles: nutrition, exercise, hormone balance, and mindset. Right. You become that theta male. Everything you said, you reached that. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Jay Campbell. Quick commercial for the Optimized Tribe with U.S. Navy SEAL Michael Jaco and I every Monday night at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. There is not a single group online where you will get the highest level intel that Michael and I can provide you from mastering intuition to fully optimizing your hormonal health to improving your fitness, to raising your vibration and increasing your consciousness. There isn't a single group online with two dudes like Michael and myself, helping people become the best version of their self. It's literally $99 a month and you get a 90 minute call with me and Michael every single Monday night. Don't wait another second. Sign up now at the link, theoptimizedtribe.com. I appreciate you guys and I send you tremendous love and light. That's absolutely true. And I want to go back because been on therapeutic testosterone for 20 years. Spiritually, I was not the person that I am now initially, but obviously we're all evolving and growing as souls in this incarnated physical universe. Um, but, you know, I, I, you know, looking back, I can see 
when I first started taking testosterone as a confident, you know, natural alpha type dude, I did get cocky. You yeah. know, I did get, there were times where I was like, you know, I'm better than you, bro. You know, I look better than you. I'm physically stronger than you. I, I think back to Robert De Niro and uh, Kate Beer. I can out philosophize you, <laughs> right? Like, I mean, you, you have that feeling yeah. of superiority, but as you said, with the mindset and the working on the inner game and the inner path and the, and the walking the spiritual path, like you get to a place of like, as you said it, compassion. And when you get to a place of compassion and having empathy for other human beings, you're going to be like, wow, this is a gift. Like I have been rewarded. And in the spirit of gratitude, like I want to like be able to lead or to teach or to just showcase this gift in a way that other men and their wives or even women too, if we talk about women too, you know, mm -hmm. which we should can, can, can emulate. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so it's like, how do I become this person who wrote this book and then also become the being that is representative of what you would become having this power that obviously testosterone brings you. And when I say power, I mean like all the things that you said, the four yes. things that yes. encompasses, because it is true. We're looking for a balance, right? Like the great Walter Russell said that, Life is about attaining rhythmic balance in all things, right? So it's like the ebb and flow, but how do you go from being too high all the time, which is excited, passionate, exuberant, to balance where you're also centered and calm and you don't react with your ego? So there, and, and, and again, testosterone will put a man and a woman in the center, but it does take you as a being to want to become a better man or a better woman. And that's where, you know, your tenets, your core, you know, constituent points are in that the mindset plays the biggest role. And that also will come with age and wisdom and experience. Completely, man. Completely. It, it, it's so amazing that we're talking about this. And again, as we've seen how we've evolved from totally. what we were, again, for me, I started just my book at first was, I was only going to talk about this session. But you have to add the other components. It's not, uh, I have guys who do this. They call me a month later. They're like, dog, you know, the testosterone's not doing much. I'm like, okay, how's your diet? Ah, I still eat three cheeseburgers. Sure. I drink. No, we, it, it, it's a tool. And the mindset is also a tool. Actually, Jay, that's something great. I started doing ketamine, IV ketamine treatments in the office. Amazing. Um, it, it, because some guys, like I said before, I was able to optimize some guys just with nutrition and exercise. Right. The next tool I added was the hormone balance. But I have guys that they get those three things, but their mindset is still stuck on victimhood, negativity, um, you, you know, yeah, all the way low. And no matter what I would tell them, they couldn't get this. So I've had really breakthroughs on some of this. Once you're able to kind of feel that unity feeling, that oneness, and you see, yeah. you know what, man, I'm this small. Once exactly. you realize this and you have that inner confidence, now you can kind of step back and you're like, I got this. I feel good. All is well moving forward. That's beautiful. I, I, I think of the quote to that. You have to get to a place of the more you know, the, I'm sorry, the more you learn, the less you know. And you, and you have, and you have to get to that awareness and it is it's an awareness it's a knowing of like you know what i am this tiny infinitesimal granule of sand in a, a billion if not a trillion beyond that you know uh beaches yeah and so then you come to the perspective of like this is just again you get back to gratitude this is a total gift and i'm here i have this ability i'm optimized my health is optimized. I have the use of my fingers and my thumbs. I can search online. I can speak to amazing people like, you know, Rudy Eberwine. I mean, it's like it, it, everything goes back to the recognition that you are in the energy of gratitude. Yeah. And when you're in the energy of gratitude, everything is abundance. Like your view, you know, you talked about, you know, this. And so I had to say that, but it's like, to get a person out of here, and again, mm -hmm. you know, right now, the world 
loves to teach people yes. it's okay to not be your fault. Yeah. You're not accountable. Mm -hmm. So and so did this to you. Your mom and dad didn't love you enough, blah, blah. But it's like when you get to a place of having gratitude, you just instantly, this goes away. And you now become personally accountable for everything, dude, right? Like, like you literally just take ownership for every single thing that happens in your life because you're truly, again, in that energy. It's a divine energy of like, you know what, man? I'm so blessed. Yeah. But, but what you said is exactly this. But it comes from being in a good place. Exactly. Until you're exactly. in a good place, you can't see. That's why, for example... And you ahead. can't be... But I, I, I want to say, to, to, I don't want to cut you off, but... No. You can't be in a good place until your hormones are balanced. Until you, I, I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're yeah. a monk, how big, how powerful the, your mind is. If you have low testosterone, you need testosterone. Um, until you feel, when you feel better, you can be better. If I wake up every day, I have joint pains, no energy, no libido. How can I be positive and Horrible. give my best to the world? Their bodies are reeked with inflammasomes. Yes. They're Absolutely. constantly in pain. And as you know, there are many people who are older, who have done a lot of inner work, but they are suffering from a hormonal imbalance or let's call it a deficiency. And they are in the mind. So they're stuck right here at this level and they can't get to that abundance feeling because yes, it is biological. They cannot feel good. But I love those patients. Because they've already done the exactly work. The it's health. the hardest work of the mind. Right. The body work is easy. Simple. Look, yep. I testosterone makes me look like an amazing doctor. So testosterone is this. So the patients who come to me, and I have a, quite a few of those, that their mind is in the right place. Their nutrition is good. Their exercise is good. But they just can't reach that level. Their testosterone is in the 300. I, I, I become a god to them once I replace that testosterone. I'm, right. I'm like, dude, all I, do, all I did, I gave you what your body needed. But that was the missing piece. Right. Now, right. if we take it the other way, uh, my most challenging patient is the one that is optimized on nutrition, exercise, and hormone, but his mindset is stuck. Zero inner work, work, right. But they can be right. coached out of this, but it is more challenging. All right, so it's a perfect segue to talk about what you sent me, what oh, I'm going man. to do, which is, hopefully this will show up. Can you see it? Beautiful. So I, I've discovered something amazing, man. So uh, there is an old Japanese concept called Ikigai. Ikigai is a reason for being. It's a blueprint to get to your purpose, purpose in life. So it is re in relation to what you do, your work. And just like my theta theory that I had, it's the intersection of four bubbles. So as you see, and you want to ask yourself, and I know, Jay, you found your ikigai. I found my ikigai. So you want to ask yourself that question. What you do in life, is it something that you love? Are you good at it? Do you get paid for it? And does the world need it? Those four bubbles. And right at the intersection, if you answer yes to all those, the confluence of those four bubbles is ikigai. So that's your passion. That's your purpose. So look at you and me, Jay. Testosterone replacement, educating, healing um, men and women is our ikigai. That's right. We love it. We're good at it. We get paid for it. And the world needs it. Right? This that's is exactly a more than 1,000-year-old right. concept from Japan. And in, in Japan, that's why they say that uh, again, this was the old generation in Okinawa. That's where it started. That those people are happy because they try to live their life within that principle. Right. Everything you do, try to find that center. Again, the balance, the sweet spot. It's so so me, this is profound. Continue. Go ahead. So let me tell you, I've added another dimension to this. So this is for the external world, what you do. Now you need health. So my blueprint to well-being i've based it on ikigai it's those four intersecting bubbles when i coach my guys now i'm like we're going to help you with two things we're going to help you find your rudy guy i call it rudy <laughs> <guy>. <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> dr rudy it's my rudy guy so That's let's get awesome. you to feel well did you trademark that yet by the way i'm sorry 
Did you trademark that? It's by the trademarked, way? man. Dr. Rudy, Rudy guy. That's so awesome. li li listen to, to, to this. I'm like, find your passion, find your purpose with Ikigai. Feel better with Rudy guy and see how sweet life can get. That's now you have purpose, stuff. you have well-being. What else can, and me and you, we live this. We just did not put a name to it yet. This is a blueprint to happiness. So I've added purpose. Hold on, I'm going to stop you because uh, I just caught you in something. This is profound. This is a blueprint to joy because happiness is transient. Yeah, yes, 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 yes. yes. Uh, <laughs> semantics, I agree with you. So, so for me, uh, when I say happiness, it's an easy word to understand. But you know what happiness is? Love with capital L. Yes. Joy is love with capital L. Yes. That's the biggest energy. And if we go further, what is that biggest energy? It's the creator. And we connect with it. So right. this is how you get that. But until you feel well, you can get there. Now you can feel well, but you don't have a purpose in life. You're not going to be at your best. You have a purpose. And man, what can stop you? Dude, this is but such work out it. stuff. I mean, look, I, I've talked about this in podcasts before, but this is so, I mean, I commend you. Brilliant. But dude, if you went out on the street right now, and you asked a hundred people, men and women, and you said, what is your purpose? If you found one purpose, one person that actually gave you an icky guy, it would be a miracle. Because again, most people don't attribute their purpose or their mission to anything other than, oh, I'm a father. Yeah. I'm a husband. I work and I make $250,000, $300,000. You see what I'm saying? Like 100%. you and I are people that are mission-driven, purpose-driven and have created this. But the the point of the, what I'm going with this is that everyone can do this. But you have to do the work to figure out what this is. And I think this is so highly relevant because if you are watching this podcast right now and you absolutely hate your life, AKA your job, whatever it is, you're in a cubicle and you're like, dude, I don't have a mission and purpose, but I just go to work every day and eat McDonald's yeah. cheeseburgers. Then you know what? Allow this podcast with this great, amazing man and myself to just, this is your moment. This is this where is you moment. find your purpose. And tomorrow you quit your fucking job. You well, literally I'm go in and tell your boss I'm done. Well, Jay, people still live in the real world. So Ikigai, what I like with it, it's taking an abstract concept and yeah. putting it into a blueprint. So what I encourage everybody to do, they should look at this and, and trace where they're at. So if you, let's say you have a job that you're good at, but that you hate, but you make good money for it and the world needs it, Find a side hustle. Side hustle. Yeah. Find the one that this is how I started testosterone replacement. Exactly. I started doing my clinic. I was doing two hours a week while I was working in the hospital. And this now has become my ikigai. But this was a very abstract concept. It's hard to say. But when you have a blueprint written like this, look at those bubbles. You can see, all right, where, do, where am I right now? Where am I falling? And you see where you are. And what can you improve? It's the same thing with Rudy Guy. Where Hell are you in God. your well-being? Is it that you need to improve your nutrition? Is it your hormones? You could have your exercise and your nutrition good. But map it out and come up with a plan. So when it's so, you go from abstract to really on paper. It's a blueprint. Yeah. You yeah. put those two things together and you get as close to the middle as possible. Life is sweet, baby. No, dude, it's amazing. I mean, you know me, I'm extreme. I, I, I just know that there are so many people out there right now who are floundering and they, they lack a reason to do what they know they have to do, which is again to, you know, I'm reading a, and again, there's no coincidences. I'm reading a profound book right now that I will highly recommend that you get to. It's called Universal Human. And it's written by Gary Zukov, you know, the guy that wrote the quantum physics book, The oh, Dancing yes. Loop Masters, Br a brilliant guy. It's his newest mm -hmm. book. It came out in June. And he talks about 
there's only two ways to live as a human right now. The third dimension is unraveling and dying. And we're moving into a higher vibrational existence where, as you said, unity is all that matters. And so if you are still working in a third dimensional job, you're attached to this concept of whatever it is, but you hate it. It's up to you to choose to leave it. Now you are right. You are giving a compassion, reasonable, logical strategy of create a side hustle and plan. But Rudy, I think we would, we're at a point now where you and I both know this, like there ain't a lot of time yeah. to stay hooked to the third dimension. So if you want to like make a cosmic rip in the universe for yourself right now, and you are miserable then you're going to have to dive off the deep end and jump into very unexplained territory. You are right. I, I, again, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. But there are a lot of people out there right now, dude, that are literally hanging on to nothing. And if you really want to take a leap and you're watching this podcast right now, take a screenshot of this, send an email to Rudy and I'll have him send this to you. Email me, my team, we'll send it to you. But like, dude, this is beautiful. This is what people have to really do to find their mission and purpose in life. And like I said, very few people ever do. Jay, uh, it, it's so amazing. So side, find a side hustle. But the reality is, you know how you can make that quantum leap and then go into and become a trailblazer and make your own ikigai. You need Rudy guy. <laughs> Pistachio replacement. You need your mindset to be at the right place. No doubt. Because once you like this, I have another no patient, and that was amazing. Thirty-two year old corporate lawyer. Pistachio, and same thing. Low, uh, high three hundred. Uh, went to see a bunch of doctors, endocrinologists, and all this. He was doing pretty well. He had a good job. He had kids, but he told me, "My life, I, I'm, I'm not there." You know, discussed everything had all classical symptoms of low T and I call it functional hypogonadism when yep. you don't lower than that number, just to keep it simple. Six months later, I took to the guy and he's like, doc, you won't believe that. I had the guts enough to quit my seven figure corporate law so firm job. And I opened my own law firm. It's like I, right now I'm not making as much, but right. I am a freaking alpha. He's I'm happy gonna though. This. I'm going to do it. But how did he get there? By optimizing his hormones. Exactly. I worked on his test on his nutrition. I worked on his mindset. This guy now is killing it with his law firm. So beautiful, dude. Like, I mean, that that's that's so true. I mean, you know, obviously, because you and I are already optimized, and I don't really think along that lines, but you still do because this is what you're teaching and what you're yeah. preaching. It's what you're embodying, but. It's true. I mean, I, I could say it till I'm blue in the face. Obviously, I'm a shill because I'm you. I'm a t pro T guy. You're a pro T guy. But the truth is, and clearly the evidence is now proving that, dude, if you don't have optimized testosterone in this world that you're living in right now, you're not going to find your mission and purpose. Yeah, I mean, work. you said it earlier, and let's just say it. Literally a hundred years ago, our forefathers were walking around with four to five times. Yeah. The like free the testosterone method. that you and I are walking around in. And there is no tool to fix that other than therapeutic testosterone. And I know, and Rob talks about this, and we're all about natural adjuvants and interventions first. But let's just be honest, dude. Look around. This is annihilation of the endocrine system. You can't even walk outside in any major city without pulling in God knows what kind of particulates. Yeah. So, so testosterone is the biggest tool in the tool belt. It is. Because, Jay, what's to me? So when I do those talks, I'm like, I have bad news and good news. Bad news is no matter how much we try to stay away from those EDCs, right. phthalates are everywhere, BPA is everywhere. Mark. Until the big companies start making major changes. And even then, a lot of them are forever chemicals. Right. Even when they stop the production, it's... They're still in our environment. Know, so no matter how much we try to protect ourselves. So I believe, not believe, the science shows that to toxic load is very important. Yeah. So that's why we stop drinking it in, in, in plastic bottles as much as possible. You know what's a big exposure also? Our, our fragrances. Oh, um, everything that you put in your shower. Care. That's why 
But there's only so much you cannot protect yourself. So you get to a point that I've tried my best, but I can't protect myself. What's the next logical thing? Well, let's replace your bioidentical testosterone exactly. to exactly. make you more like you were supposed to be. Yes, yes. And honestly, dude, that's, that, that, I mean, we have to start being honest, even in the clinical space that, you know, I, I, I'll, I'll just give Rob credit. You know, he says, and, 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 you know, this was in the book, but this has now changed and he'll be the first to admit it again. We're admitting that we were wrong mm-hmm. four years ago. He said that if you were over the age of 50, you were 1% or less to actually be able to stay optimized naturally. And that's the most anal retentive type A personality possible, right? And he even says now it's less than 1% if you're over the age of 50. So let's not even go there. Let's go lower. He said then, and again, change now, 40 to 50 was 20%. He says now it's under 5%. So Rudy, let's just be honest right now. We can even end this podcast before, you know, I'm going to let people know how to work with you and connect with you, but let's just be honest and say it as it is. You will have to be the most genetically blessed specimen or you're living in Mm -hmm. rural blue zones. Exactly. You're living in an area that has zero uh, smog, like you called it toxic load to not consider bioidentical therapeutic testosterone for optimization as you age, because let's face it. I mean, this podcast proves it. Your book's going to prove it. My book is going to prove it. You cannot live hashtag a fully optimized life without highly considering, if not using some form of therapeutic testosterone to allow you to age with grace. I mean, I, I don't know other way to say it. As you know, again, you look around at older guys, dude, and they're broken down. You know, I'm 51 now. So in 20 years, I'll be in my 70s. I have a lot of patients in the nursing home in their late 60s and 70s. Parkinson's disease, like a lot of the EDCs has been linked to this. Alzheimer's dementia. Right. I don't want to go there. Um, no. I want to be at 70, no. 75 years old, still kicking it, like, you know, like healing, teaching helping people enjoying life, uh, being in that high vibration level. The way we do this, it starts now. Yeah, It starts now, but we need more warriors like you and me to get that message, to treat those people, to stand up, to say, no, that's not the way. Let's change things. Let's help. So, well, so again, well, you're man, already doing it. Job we're, for what you're doing. both doing it. In 20, so, yeah, years, I have to tell 20, you. 20 years from now, you and I will be doing podcasts about this then. Yep. We're both going to be 70. We'll do we'll it, man. We'll still be talking about this. <laughs> we'll still be in good shape. It's yep. quantum physics. Our thoughts become things. We are yep. creating our reality through our words, thoughts, and actions. And we're putting this out into the universe. And it's a boomerang, brother. It's coming back. So listen it's to this. It's only going to help. Quantum physics begets biochemistry. Exactly. Biochemistry begets biology. Biology begets psychology. Our thoughts influence our hormones. Our hormones influence our psychology. And we are being bombarded by those toxic EDCs messing up with our hormones that's messing up with our biology and our psychology. So if a person cannot understand that, you're in a lot of trouble. Bro, you're amazing. Our next podcast will be actually identifying who's doing this to us. <laughs> <laughs> but Ooh. we will first take a couple of toad venom hits and then we'll go deep. And then you know they, they can't they can't actually punish us because we could just say, but we were the under in the influence of plant medicine, bro. Well, let me let me tell you what the age management. <laughs> doctor of the future, which I'll be one of the first one to be like this. So, uh, cause you know, the, the studies on MDMA and psilocybin are just oh, yeah. amazing. Both of them got break designation of breakthrough medicine by the FDA. So the doctor, the age management doctor of the future will optimize nutrition, exercise, hormone, and psychics. Exactly. Exactly. I could do some psychedelics once they become FDA approved. Let's be clear on this. But once that is, that is another piece that we will add to this. 
and I will be the first one to go towards this. I go to a lot of the conferences on yep. psychedelic medicine because I see that's a way to go and change the mindset of many people who are still stuck in that low vibration. It, it breaks the veil of the people that's stuck it. in the brain. And this is crazy to say this, but Canada is already now past us because they've created the capsules with the psilocybin yep. capsules. They even have ayahuasca in capsules now. Yeah, we've talked about this, man. <laughs> I mean, so I but, mean, but it's you know, coming. It's coming. It's coming to the states. I have no doubt. Yeah, exactly. And and you know, we are the light bringers the light bearers the the children of the light whatever you want to call us like you said the warriors of the light i mean it's all about getting people to accept that balance can only be achieved when the physical health the vessel is balanced and and you know it's most people have been going about it wrong you know they they want to be spiritual they want to walk the path but if they're inflamed they have low testosterone I'm like no you, you can't do one without the other. It's literally about attaining balance. And again, I don't want people to like come at me and say, you're saying that people that are obese can't be spiritually balanced. No, that's not <laughs> what I'm saying. I'm saying that if you truly want to receive everything from the great creator who is allowing us to enjoy this experience right now, you cannot receive maximum downloads until your vessel is balanced. You it's have that to be simple. in the right receptive mode, right. right? Receptive mode. And that receptive mode is Rudy guy. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you are amazing. So guys, look, man, Dr. Rudolph Eberwein, find him on social media, Facebook and Instagram at the medical, actually, what is it? Medial health. Is, is that right? That's medical. It's that's medical wrong. health Institute. Yeah. She actually spelled it wrong. So I apologize. It's medical health Institute, uh, low T doc, medical health Institute.com. Go there, find him out. Now, are you guys, I have to ask, cause I'm going to get this question. Are you, I, and I remember I asked uh, Miguel recently, but uh, what is your issue guys? W what is your issue right now with working with anybody outside of the state of Florida? Are there any limitations? Well, so we, we're doing um, um, telemedicine, you know, um, the one good thing COVID brought to us mm -hmm. is that it relaxed the laws of telemedicine. So right. for now, in many states, we can do telemedicine. Of course, you know, like if somebody was interested in working with me, go on the website, call, and then we'll let you know about your state. But sure. today I did a consultation with somebody from Canada. Awesome. I did not prescribe him anything, but right. I was able to help guide him. And right. even this, I know you do a lot of this, where, where you just help guide. Sometimes guys just need to, to want to have somebody to be like, I understand you, man. I get you. But this is where I want you to go. Even this sometimes is enough to get somebody on the right path. Beautiful, brother. Beautiful, man. I love you. I appreciate you. I'm grateful that you came on the show. I will definitely have you on the show again. Like I said, we are going to talk about like who the protagonists are. This is <laughs> such a, this, I, mean, I mean, again, you know, people want to know everything. And this was such a balanced podcast talking about the things. But I love Rudy Guy. I love Ikigai. I mean, again, a reason for being is just such a beautiful, profound thing. And, you know, the fact that you're able to walk people in really finding their purpose and, and then coaching them, like you said, like with the attorney who was like, you know, stuck in this like high paid job, but he, he hated it. Yeah. And, and there's a lot of people out there that are yeah. producing at high levels, but their life is misery. Yeah. There's no reason to stay stuck in misery, brother. Yeah. But for you to make that leap, you need to be up. You need to feel that balance. You need to feel great. You need to be well. And that's yeah. where that's where we can help. A reason for being Rudy guy. Brother, I appreciate you. So again, you guys, for Dr. Rudy Eberwine, I am Jay Campbell. Remember, raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. We will see you guys very soon.